Nevertheless, who would you like to see Pitbull Cruz mix it up with? Can he beat any of the champions in your eyes? What? Anything can happen on any given night, but um, I would work, I want to see him fight Matias because he don't have to look for Matias. Matias coming, Pitbull coming. They're going to be in the center of the ring. So we're going to get an explosion. Yeah, we're going to get an explosion. I think, I think um, Matia is a bit stronger, though. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think so, too. Uh, you know, uh, Andy got that, that rivalry, right, with the Puerto Rico and, you know, Mexico. That's a huge fight. That is a huge fight, isn't it? Yeah, that's a huge, huge fight. Whenever you get a top Puerto Rican and a top Mexican fight, it's always a huge crowd. Big fight. South Big fight. Crowd. In your eyes, who would you favor in a Pitbull Cruz and, uh, you know, uh, Matias fight? Uh, I think I would go with Matias. Mm. Yeah. Matias. How does it go? Five rounds, maybe. Five. <laughs> Five rounds. Buenos dias amigos, good morning amigos, and welcome to another episode of Inside the Ropes with Coach Mario. Coach Mario, owner and head coach of Warriors Pride Boxing Academy here in Miami, Florida. How are you guys doing this morning? All right guys, there you have it. There you have it. Nacho Beristein. If you don't know who this guy is, well, you know, I, I suggest you uh, go look him up. He is one uh, in my opinion, he is the best boxing trainer of this last 20 years, 20 years or so. He's, he's made so many world champions like Juan Manuel Marquez and so many others. Uh, this guy has been overlooked so many times here in the United States uh, and has never been nominated as uh, or won the trainer of the year award which is unbelievable his knowledge of boxing is immense uh he's been involved with the sport for many decades maybe six decades or so uh and there he you have it guys he is saying there you read the subtitles in spanish if you understood what what uh the spanish language then um i don't have to uh translate it for for those who don't know uh, Spanish, uh, he said that Pitbull Cruz does not convince him, all right, yet he has improved uh, his boxing ability. He is has improved those um, um, uh, swinging shots that he throws, you know, that uh, telegraphs and you can see a mile away, uh, but that he does not convince him and that the uh, person that would give him the most trouble at 140 pounds would be Subriel Matias, El Orgullo de Maternillo. There you guys have it said by the wise and very knowledgeable uh, boxing trainer, 
Nacho Beristein, who I believe is the best trainer in boxing or was the best trainer in boxing. He's at a little advanced in years already, but he's still active. This guy's still active training fighters. Um, and you also saw Kenny Ellis, trainer, one of the trainers for Tank Davis, saying that he chooses uh, Sobriel Matias over is that people cruise and that uh it wouldn't even be close he says that uh so real matias way stronger uh a lot uh bigger than is that people cruise who nacho Beristein calls el perrito the little doggy uh and would uh finish him inside of five rounds all right guys that's what some of the experts say some other experts uh or uh, boxing uh, critics uh, praise it's like people cruise as uh, the new face of boxing for Mexico but I still have to wait guys and it's not like I said I've been saying before I just don't criticize just for the sake of criticizing I'm just saying people are jumping the ship uh, uh, too fast jumping the gun too fast uh, hopping on the on the van wagon or the choo-choo train uh, the hype train uh, for Pitbull Cruz too fast and um, Pitbull Cruz's career does not show that he is or could be the top fighter 140 pounds. Let's see. Time will tell. But today what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about that matchup. How would Isaac Pitbull Cruz uh, pair up or uh, come out and... Uh, match up with Suriel Matias in a, in a fight and I'll tell you what my thoughts are and the reason why I believe Isaac People Cruz's team is, does not want that fight right now is are looking to uh, extend his championship create more uh, of a bigger fan base I believe uh, Isaac People Cruz right now uh, his following went from almost nothing to over a million followers on Instagram overnight. And that's where most of the casual fans uh, hop uh, into the the hype train. They exact people cruise hype train and, uh, you know, and is getting all that, um, all that um, marketing and all that buzz that's going right now with the Zach people cruise when i believe you know in all honesty you know although he did beat handily very easily Rory romero i knew it and a lot of people knew that that was gonna happen and i called it guys i called it i said he was gonna destroy it uh Rory romero it's that people cruise Rory romero is a mediocre fighter you know and and see it this way all right if you have a, 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 you know, a guy coming to the gym that thinks he knows how to fight, fight somebody that has had uh, more, uh, more fights than him, walks into the ring, what do you think is going to happen? The more experienced, the, the, the most schooled, the guy with uh, better skills is going gonna, is gonna, is gonna to win. And that's exactly what happened now, you know. You could see Roy Romero, he's... he's he lacked skills. You know, he was gifted this title, the WBA title. He, uh, if Mael Barroso was overlooked, didn't get the rematch. You know, they somehow uh, accommodated his like people Cruz to fight for a title when he has never fought on 140. So these are all things, and this is how the machine works uh, behind uh, the curtains all of this uh organizations work the same way they're just trying to create uh a hype job they're crying trying to create an idol seeing that Isaac people cruz has such a great following from uh, the mexicans and mexican-american fan base and now all these casuals are hopping into the hype train they're they're, they're seeing dollar signs with people cruz do you think they're gonna risk seeing exact people Cruz lose his title in the first defense so what we're going to do today and like i said we're going to see how exact people Cruz would would fare with uh against uh 
Subir el Matías. All right. And a side people cruise is 5'4. Subir el Matías is about almost 5'10, 5'9 and a half, 5'10. All right. Long, long reach. Throws multiple combinations, real fast hands. Uh, has really heavy hands. It's like I've been saying before. It's like getting hit with a sledgehammer, all right? And even uh, if that little, or, or a mallet, a rubber mallet, heavy rubber mallet. And if you are tapped with a rubber mallet multiple times, just tapping, it's gonna come to a point you're gonna say, oh man, quit it. I, I can't take this anymore. And that is the way Subriel Matias punches feel, all right? Isaac People Cruz, on the other hand, throws wild, overhand uh you know hooks and uh you know and what they call in spanish volados you know and uh you can see them a mile away he uh he he's he actually throws every punch with mean intentions he throws it with a lot of power this kid is you know a little powerhouse you know he is in shape like there's no tomorrow he's got a good uh, mentality he believes in himself although he's a little short guy he is very strong mentally now when you have a little guy and you've heard of that that saying good big guy will always beat the good little guy that's what I see is gonna happen this time and not always happens that way and that's the way it was with with uh, Iron Mike Tyson but um, with Subriel Matias, he has faster hands, I believe has more power, can connect more punches uh, than Isaac People Cruz in while Isaac People Cruz lands one or two, right? Because he has to, you know, bring that 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 uh, that hand back, that punch back. He's telegraphing those punches. And by the time you know he connects with one of these wild hooks. So Uriel Matias has connected three or four times, really hard shots. And that's going to interrupt uh, the rhythm of Isaac Pitbull Cruz. That's going to interrupt the ability of Isaac Pitbull Cruz to throw those wild hooks. Uh, Isaac Pitbull Cruz, although he's a very aggressive fighter, have, we have never seen him being moved back. All right. Can Isaac Pitbull Cruz fight off his back foot, moving backwards? I have never seen Isaac Pitbull Cruz on the fights that I've seen of him, maybe in the past when he was in Mexico, he did fight that way, but I have never seen him go, go backwards. All right, he's always moving forward. And that's because it has not been a fighter that actually engages him and goes toe to toe with him and has uh, equal or more power than himself. All right, and is as aggressive as himself. But we have seen Suriel Matias move backward and throw punches at the same time. So he can he can fight off his back foot. Uh, Suriel Matias did that with Petro Sanayan. Suriel Matias did that with, with multiple fighters. All those five fighters that he has encountered, you can see him fighting backwards and connecting hard shots. On the inside, forget about it. You know? He'll, he'll uh, be able to hit you with everything he has. And like I said before, uh, Suriel Matias throws over 100 punches per round. How many punches does Isaac People Cruz throws per round? So that's what you have to look at, you know? Isaac People Cruz, while he's trying to land one or two haymakers, has already been hit. And I tell you, it doesn't matter how good his defense is. He's got a little tight defense different because he's short he those punches are gonna hit his arms are gonna hit his gloves are gonna hit his head are gonna hit his side and they're gonna hurt and I believe after five rounds five six rounds it's like people cruise it's not gonna be able to take it anymore and he's gonna be dropped either dropped or he's gonna he's gonna quit and that's gonna be a hard part because it's like people cruise I don't see him as quitting as a quitting type and that might be detrimental to his health just like what happened to, uh, may he rest in peace, uh, Max Dadashev. He had no quitting him. Dangerous part of Subriel Matias is that if you don't quit, 
on his tool and you're taking punishment after punishment after punishment every round is is getting worse and worse that might be a, a career ending type of fight for you actually sean porter has said it you know uh it doesn't matter um whether you fight uh Surin matias and you win or you lose or draw. And actually, uh, Robert Garcia said that also. He goes, you're never going to be the same fighter again. He's going to destroy your career. If you go 12 rounds with Surin Matias, if people go 12 rounds with Surin Matias, win, lose, or draw, he's not going to be the same fighter. And I might cost him dearly. Dearly. I think Surin Matias has a granite chin. I think Pitbull Cruz... So far, looks like he can take a punch. He, he was able to take punches from, not too many, from uh, Rolly Romero. I don't think he took so many punches by Tank, Tank Davis. So we have to see him. We can take a powerful, uh, natural 140-pound puncher like Subriel Matias and continue moving forward. And guys, you know, the hype train those guys that are already claiming he is something uh, out of the ordinary, somebody that's going to rule the 140-pound division, we have to see what his, his next move is, all right? So after uh, Suriel Matias fights Lee Amparo, if he stops him, like I think he will inside of seven rounds, uh, I believe that this would be a great fight. There's a lot of money involved. The fan base from Puerto Rico and the fan base from Mexico would come out in droves to see them fight. It would be another classic Mexico versus Puerto Rico. But I got to tell you guys, I really don't think that Isaac Pitbull Cruz is going to take that uh, chance and his family to lose his title on his first title defense. All right. So who do you think he's going to fight next? Should he fight Imael Barroso next or should he just go and fight? Uh, the likes wait and and get a title opportunity unification title opportunity with Subriel Matias. Let me know what you guys think But uh, this is all for now guys. Just wanted to share this uh, Comments with you guys some of the comments that uh, these trainers have made and I want to get your feedback All right on what would happen. Anyway guys. God bless you all. We'll be talking about Liam Paro and Subriel Matias in my next episode. I'm gonna break down that fight we're going to talk a little bit about the pros and cons who uh, kiss to kiss to flip victory and some strategy that I think uh, should be uh, quite interesting to discuss. All right, guys. Well, this is all for now. Coach Mario, owner and head coach of Warriors Pride Boxing Academy, saying hasta la vista. God bless you all and peace.